This year, I'm starting a series on making a variety of weapons and roughly following their evolution through history. Starting from basic metallurgy of various bladed weapons, to bows and arrows, then eventually working my way up to gunpowder and even a gun. Oh, well, we'll see what happens there. A key element of this will be finally mastering one material that's been holding me back, metals. But before I get started on metal making, I want to explore the weapons and materials that are used before metalworking was discovered. Stones. Using a specific one that can be sharper than even steel. An obsidian blade. While I was in Utah last summer, I made a stop in the Black Rock Desert in west central Utah, an area known for its volcanic activity with its last eruption around 720 years ago. This area has a variety of geological formations caused by its volcanic activity, but the one I'm after is volcanic glass. A local geologist pointed out one location to find some. Located seemingly in the middle of nowhere and traveling on terrain not ideally suited for my compact car, I found the area filled with black obsidian rock. Obsidian forms when lava high in silica cools rapidly, preventing the formation of crystals. A type of glass it is composed of at least 70% silica, which is often tinted dark black due to impurities, but it can also form other colors depending on what impurities are present. Pretty cool. Just gonna collect a bucket of it and uh, use it for making sharp objects. After loading up with some stones, I brought them back home and met with Dr. Tostevin at the University of Minnesota. I previously worked with Tostevin in a past video where he taught me how to nap flint to make a basic hand axe. This time, I want to learn how to apply this skill to forming a blade out of obsidian. The samples are pretty big, but they have lots of inclusions in them. But I can show you how to make some cutting edges that you could actually set them into a haft. Mm -hmm. such you can make as long a cutting edge as you want yeah. without having to make the actual stones in one piece. Obsidian is a very, very sharp rock. It is, the technology is pretty much the same as, as what you did last time you were here. So this is actually sharper than flint because obsidian being a volcanic glass can get to be one molecule thick at the edge. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's why it's, it's so powerfully sharp and, and people will use it for eye surgery. But in terms of what the, the Aztecs did with with their obsidian, they're famous for taking the technology to its utmost refinest, really were experts at, at working obsidian. And they did it with a technique that made what are called prismatic blades. Those swords, they had segments of these blades and they put them in the edges on both sides mm -hmm. of these long swords. I'm more afraid of the concept of, a, of an obsidian hafted sword than, yeah. than I am a steel sword. So for napping tools like this is kind of a refined skill they have to learn over years then? This takes you know, many, many years of, of craft specialization to be able to pull it off. So it's probably not something I can just sit down and do right away? No, unfortunately. And if, even, even the other ways of making blades are much trickier than, let's say, the hand axe you made. One unsuccessful blow on a blade core often means that you've ruined the whole piece. Mm -hmm. So what I thought to do, there's several ways of going about it. You could actually just apply that same technology that you already learned with making a hand axe. You can actually take flakes and use those as inserts, much like the Aztecs did, but they used long, long blades to do that. We'll just use small flakes. Okay, to do that's probably the most achievable for me to do. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually plaster cast of a piece from 12 to 14,000 years ago in Siberia. Mm -hmm. And on the edges, they made grooves into which they set blades. But this is the general idea of making something shorter, like a, a knife rather than the big, yeah. the big sword. So how do we get started? Okay, so to give you just a refresher, to make a flake, you need to hit one surface that intersects with another at an angle less than 90 degrees. And you need the direction of the blow to be away from the, the piece. You don't come into this thing directly. So with a hard hammer, I might come down like that, strike, and it takes off the flake like that. And then your gesture would be like that, and you, you make sure you have a follow through, don't pull back at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be very hard with obsidian yeah. compared to the, the flint. There you go. All right. Look at that. Yeah. There you go. Okay, much bigger, but you can see how hitting further back made a bigger flake. 
Oh yeah. In and of themselves, these are, are very useful cutting tools. Okay. That's a nice, relatively continuous edge. Right now we're just looking for things that are slightly thinner and, and the thing yeah. is the problem is it's just getting your accuracy down and really where mm -hmm. you want to hit. Because all these are very useful cutting edges. You know, this edge might work. Yeah. And this is already fairly oops, vertical, so it would be relatively the same thickness as this one. Mm -hmm. And you could put them back to back like that, okay. I suppose. So you're getting sort of that much cutting edge. But also I think you have enough raw material here that you can just keep practicing it with yeah. more more hand-eye coordination. I think you'll you'll get it. Okay. Certainly getting the right kind of breakage. Well good luck. I think it'll be yeah. pretty cool. Thanks for giving it a little refresher and Yeah, yeah. Just be careful with it. Yeah. It's very sharp. Yeah. Thanks to Dr. Tostevin, I now have both a plan for making the blade that's achievable with my skill level and a rough understanding of how to nap obsidian. To hold the blades, I still have several leftover chunks from the tree I fell for my eyeglasses from scratch. Since I'm making a Stone Age weapon, I thought I'd try to limit myself to only Stone Age tools to make a wooden portion of the blade. The flint hand axe I made before, a few granite hammer stones, and of course, my obsidian itself. The jagged edges of the obsidian work decently to saw the narrow portion of the board. Not too bad. Although, it was a pretty slow process. Come on. Let's get some duct tape. There we go. We're done. Need to make some obsidian scissors. Snip it off. Hands are numb. Cutting the thicker side was going to be a challenge, though. So I switched up to the flint hand axe I had previously made, as it's a bit more resistant to shattering than the obsidian. After a very long and slow process of sign through it, I eventually got bored of that and decided to try splitting the board to the desired width. Using some napped chunks of flint, I tried to use them as a wedge to split the board down the grain. After moderate success with that, I went back to the thick end and finally got it cut enough so that I could break it. Then back to the narrowing and splitting of the wood. While sharp, the flint and obsidian was prone to breakage and was very difficult to make work. I suspected I might not have been able to get enough force, so I attempted to construct a simple Stone Age tool called an ads. And while that kind of helped, it just still wasn't enough. With some progress, but mostly frustration, I moved on to napping the blades. I figured the woodworking would be the easier part, while the napping would be the challenge. But with the method Dr. Tostevin recommended for me, the napping was actually pretty easy. I just needed to break off pieces that were thin, narrow, and long enough for the blade. After wasting over two days trying to carve the wood using only Stone Age tools, So if you haven't guessed it, you are not watching Premium Technology. I decided to throw in the towel and switch to some modern equipment. The difference was amazing. While well, the flint and obsidian were razor sharp, sharp enough to cut my finger through the gloves, they just couldn't compare to professionally made hardened steel tools. With the wood portion of my blade finally done, I now just need to attach everything. For glue, I'll just need to boil some of the leftover hide from the pigskin I used to make a football before. After 
After boiling overnight, it produces a very sticky animal hide glue. Mmm, gooey. With enough pieces laid out to fill at least one side of the blade, I just need to carve out all the slots in the wood and then glue in each blade piece. For letting it sit for a couple days, the glue should hopefully be hard and ready to be used. So in the end I've made a kind of a, a crude blade, a bit of a far cry from the more advanced blades you'd see in like Mesoamerica, but without spending five years to learn that skill, it's probably a pretty decent cutting edge. Ow. Obsidian has been a rather interesting material to work with and, and pop culture has kind of a mystical view, whether it's dragon glass in Game of Thrones or opening portals in Minecraft. But at its core, it's just glass, and I've spent a lot of time in past projects trying to both make glass as well as cut it and shape it into things like lenses. And napping is just a different way of working with the glass itself. And one of the things I was surprised to learn from Dr. Tostevin is that you can actually use the same technique on just regular glass. Trying to make the wood portion of this blade using just the Stone Age tools really reveal the challenges of non-metallic tools and just how big of a difference they are. So that makes me a little skeptical of how well this will actually work at cutting. Uh, it's definitely razor sharp, but uh, I don't know how well it's actually going to cut. So I'm going to try it out on a few different things and uh, get an idea how well it works. First up, see how well it cuts paper. All right, so not the sharpest, I guess, in that regard. Supposedly the Aztecs with their full swords were able to be sharp enough to cut the head off of a horse. So I think that would be the true test. I'm just gonna use pork chop instead. And a book. Definitely got some penetration. Definitely cuts real deep. Hate it when you can't open bananas. Try the new obsidian blade. Mmm, banana. Works for circumcision as well. All right, so that actually worked pretty good. Uh, first thing to point out is that the tip fell off. So my glue, not the greatest. The rest of them are actually pretty good. Didn't do too great at the paper test. That might be more because of its jig in nature, but it really obliterated that pork chop. It, would uh, cut pretty deep and uh, the nice jagged nature makes it a really effective saw on flesh. So I'm actually pretty impressed. I did a lot better than I thought it would. It's probably not gonna cut the head off of a horse, but it would definitely do some serious damage, maybe nick an artery or something. I would not wanna face this. A lot of times when you see obsidian, they make these really long, beautiful daggers. But having worked with obsidian and realizing how fragile it is, I feel like they aren't very practical. I feel like they're kind of one-time use. Where something like this, like you can break one of these and it easily replace it and you're good to go and keep going. So uh, in terms of practicality, I think this is pretty good. So as I continue the series of making weapons, I'm eventually get into making some metal ones, such as bronze and iron, and then I'll be able to see how the Stone Age compares to those metallic ones. But before that, my next video is actually gonna be on a different metal that often served a different purpose, gold. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.